ended off finding out that we weren't going to get our fifth wheel until mid-May which was six weeks away and we were basically homeless so we decided to go stay with my parents in France they live in a little village called Les Isards in the Charent Maritime which is about an hour, 45 minutes from La Rochelle which is further south Yes, yeah, so we packed our lives away um, into a, a little green horse box and we set sail <laughs> we on did. the ferry we did set sail. to um, St. Marlowe and it's about a four hour drive down um, and we basically Lola. got ourselves prepped for uh, the arrival of, of the RV which was supposed to arrive in France but never did and we stayed with my parents for six weeks and they decided waiting for the fifth wheel to be ready because it, it had its IVA booked but it was going to take six weeks for the guys to go out and, and, and give it a certificate so we had time to kill so finally we got the call didn't we? we did um, we about three days before we had to it was about three days before we had to go up there um, well they were going to meet us on the other side of the port. Um, we got a phone call saying it's all ready, we can come and get it. And um, I was like, well, that, that wasn't the plan, you guys were going to bring it over. And he said, we can still bring it over if you want, but it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So if you want to do it, we can do it, but maybe you want to look into different ways of picking it up. So I drove over and picked up the fifth wheel from Portsmouth and um, got a one hour briefing on how to drive it, hitch it up, do anything I needed to do, how the water was attached, um, which was a nice crash course in RVing and it was only about half an hour away from the port, drove back down, got back on the ferry and set sail once again to France, but this time with a 38 foot RV attached to the Ford F-150. <laughs> um, it was fun, it was uh, kind of scary. Tell them about the roundabout. Yeah, yeah. My, the, the people we bought the fifth wheel from, which is uh, the fifth wheel company, um, kindly got me to hitch up or gave me my briefing on the, I think it was the 8th, I'm not sure which, which road it was on, but it was a straight run all the way down to the port, so there was nothing could go wrong. It was just straight down, and I just park into the ferry, and I was done. So, um, got a obviously hitched up, got got onto the motorway, and drove straight down into the port, and right the last roundabout, or well, the only roundabout into the actual port station, um, I took a left, and I, t I didn't take the turn wide enough. So it decided to drive over the whole roundabout, and luckily uh, it was all intact. So I didn't want to tell Amelia the first time it's I saw it. Apart from the dent on the front right? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took a bit of paint off. You know, we we twisted a bit and uh, caught the edge of the track. And a part of the fifth wheel as well. Yeah, what did I lose on the fifth wheel? Well, like a dent, you took, you gouged a hole in it. It's just a little bit of paint. It's fine though. It's no problem. Yeah. So. Uh, that was my first my first experience with the fifth wheel. First first turning experience. The wrist was all straight, so everything else was hunky dory. It was great. It was just uh, as soon as I turned, I crashed, which uh, is I can say expected. But um, I can't talk. I've never put it myself. I wouldn't. I can't even drive a car. I'm too scared. So yeah. So. He left me, meanwhile I was back in Les Isard in the little village with the two kids and the two cats. Sorry, there's a cat here. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see the Lolas. Um, so, meanwhile we were waiting back home for Brett to arrive with the fifth wheel, which we hadn't seen since the day we looked around it and we were able to touch it, which was by then nearly seven eight weeks, seven, seven weeks ago, so we haven't seen it since then, so it was very exciting to be able to to know that it was coming and 
to prepare ourselves for finally leaving, having waited for six months in total from the day we were told we were losing our jobs to the day when the fifth wheel arrived was pretty much six months, wasn't it? Six months, a long time a really to only long see time. something once. Yeah. Um, and for it all to kick off. It's, it's, it's a good moment. Yeah, yeah. So Gabriel and I got a phone call from Brett to say he was on his way. He was about five minutes away, so he ran out into the road. Hello! We're about to see the great RV. That's Grey. That, that's my brother, Grey. He got his new BMW. And. And there's the RV. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, it's massive. It can't even get around the bend. Oh my god, there's our home. So that is our new house. Watch grey. <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna have to get that around the whole of Europe. How are we going to tow that thing around the whole of Europe? I do not know. That thing is absolutely enormous. enormous. Look at those people. We've got sightseers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Bill, you might want to get the... Hello. Hello. So you kept it attached then? Not, not now, not now. I want to do the not now. Oh, that's the first thing it's I It's going to go into the middle of the road, Gabriel. We're going to get some sightseers now. Yeah, we got some serious sightseers in there. I can't in see where? A thing. On the on the road, we had people taking photos of us while we were driving. <laughs> <laughs> what washing machine in my bed? Are you kidding? Huh? I've got a washing machine in my bedroom. Yeah, you, we got a washing machine in your bedroom, sorry about so that. So you can up the bed, so you can do your washing. <laughs> yeah. you, Brett got here on the, well, got today's hours on the Friday with the fifth wheel. Um, on the Saturday, we adapted it and put the cot in for the bubba, um, taking out one of the sofas, because there were four sofas. Well, four, like, um, dinette sofas. So we took one of the dinette sofas out and we put cot in for the bubba. Um, what else did you do? Uh, there's a little bit of carpentry, more shelves to put in, yeah. stuff like that. So we got it all ready to to suit for our needs. Um, the reason why I went over, because we would have left as soon as possible, um, but we had to wait for a tracker mm. to come for our insurance. Yeah. We got yeah. permission from the mayor to we stay in, the, mayor, in yeah. the car park in Les Zard, which was really kind of him, but we told him that we were going to stay for like two days. And then the tracker was delayed and was delayed, delayed and, and delayed. delayed. So and delayed. every day we would just sit in this car park looking at the road waiting for the La Poste van to drive past um, <laughs> to deliver to deliver something. We got but a lot of modifications done though. We got, yeah, we had we the got some shelves good. put yeah. in above the TV. Brett put some shelves in in the wardrobe. Um, I'll give you a guided tour in another episode. Um, but we got the cot done. Um, Brett put some toy shelves in for the kids. Removed some shelves. Yeah. Uh, to, to make bin. way for clothes, um, yeah. Bin and, and wardrobe in for the... Anyway, we'll, we'll give you a tour of the RV at some point in another episode. 
and tell you what modifications Brett did in that first week when we were waiting in the car park in Lazy Zard for the tracker to arrive. Um, we're going to do another episode on insurance for Europe for a fifth wheel because we've had some real problems with, with getting insurance. After six months and an extra week, we finally got to leave Lazy Zard and go on our trip for the first time. As we drove out of the car park of Lazy Zard and said goodbye. We decided not to go very far for our first camping experience. We went to a little tiny village near La Rochelle where there's a, a free camping site. So we're on a map called Park for a night and yes, I didn't really know much about fifth wheels and camping. In fact, in fact, I've never been in a caravan before. I've never been in a tent before. I've never been camping before. So yeah. So we, we drove in, it was pretty easy came off the, the A road, the big road, double dual carriageway road, um, straight into a village, everything got very tight, um, at least there were speed bumps, there were lots of speed bumps, there was a school, there was lots of roadworks, the roundabouts were shut off so we had to go around, just everyone had to stop and maneuver around, so it was quite tricky, uh, and then we got to the little campsite, which was quite looked quite good, except it had a 2.6 meter height restriction on it. So we thought, well, we definitely can't fit in there because we're a meter and a half higher than that. Um, but on the opposite end, there, was, there wasn't there was a height restriction pole. So we thought, okay, well, we'll just do a loop and go in the other side. So we drove past the entrance. Once we'd gone around the corner, we realized it was a single lane road and um, it didn't look like there was any way to turn around. No, it just literally went to the sea. Went to the sea. And then it said roadworks up ahead as well, and it said uh, width restriction of like 2.6 meters or something. It which just got more and more and more scary, and yeah. we were getting it just tighter. In. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of going any further, we decided just to stop on this lane and made everybody drive around us, um, put the hazards on. Key. Ricky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some recon. So we went down, we walked down, about a five minute walk down. It was a parking lot for a little fish restaurant, I think. Super tight. <laughs> we, we worked out, I think, for our steps, we are 18 or 16 steps, large steps of mine, and um, I think the longest area in the parking lot was about 16 steps so theoretically it could have been done in practice I doubt it very much I don't think it would have I don't, don't think it would have happened so we walked back thinking okay we this is the only option we have because they had like chicanes in the road because they were doing road work so we couldn't really reverse out otherwise that would have been an option so we said we walked back and I was going to tell Amelia we were properly stuck right but it can be done. Stuck. I'm positive about it. I'm like, yes, we can turn this baby around on a hairpin, no problems. So we decided to, me and Gabriel said it can be done, we can do it. Might have to ask a few people to move their cars, but we can do it. So we got back, and on our way back, we saw they were building some of the eco village, and there was possibility for us to turn around there. So that's what we did. You turned. Drove us some, some building sand. Building sand, yeah. Really narrow turning. He did it. It was amazing. And we got out. I was so stressed. But then at least he thought, oh, we've turned around. It's all good. We'll let's, get, let's, <laughs> let's get out of here, right? But it, it, it sent us the wrong, a different way because it was, it was one way. way, one way system. And we ended up being wedged. <laughs> uh, I swear to you, there was. An inch on one side. I'm just for going us to turn this light on because I think it's getting a bit dark. Oh. Cool. There was an inch on our left side, passing a wall, and there was an inch on the right side where we asked some guy to move his car and he refused. Then we got out onto the motorway yeah. in the wrong direction from where we really needed to be. Just, looking. just to get onto the A road, we just wanted to be on an A road. We were just road, desperate. Yeah. We were just desperate to get off the, the little roads and to get onto a motorway. So we got onto the A road and we were trying to find motorway air because they, they allow you to sleep overnight there. 
and then we couldn't find one. It was getting later and later and later. By this time it was like seven, eight o'clock at night. Gray was screaming, Gabriel was hungry. Um, so we ended up pulling off at what we thought was a rest stop, but it wasn't. It was the back of a hotel and we parked on the motorway at the back of this hotel and just slept there. And I was, I was in bits. I couldn't eat. I, could, I just cried. I just said, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to go home. I just want to sell it. I just want to get a little camper van. Oh no, I was not happy. I wasn't enjoying life. No. It's awesome. So in episode three, you can see us heading off to Carcassonne. Hopefully this time actually going into a real campsite and nothing could go wrong. Only it does.